What is going on crypto enthusiasts, novice, and everyone in between? I wanted to do a quick video on some new tricks that I've been learning, kind of teaching myself, and uh, stuff that I think that you guys would find very beneficial. As you know, I like passive, easy ways to make money, and uh, I love sharing what I learn with you guys. So if that's something that you guys are interested in, please make sure you're subscribed and you have those alert notifications on kind of all over the place with my content, general premises like entrepreneurial, making money, investments, some philosophy, and kind of really anything I want to talk about. If I want to talk about needlepoint knitting next month, we're going to be talking about needlepoint knitting. And maybe I'll get into needlepoint knitting and it'll be a pretty weird prediction. But in any case, this video is going to be talking about cryptocurrency and some ways that I've been making some pretty decent returns and I'm still testing it out. I'm definitely learning some lessons um, so far. I'm either really lucky or I'm probably onto something, but I will let you guys be the judge. We have, at the time of this filming, we have Elon Musk appearing on SNL tomorrow night. By the time this is up, it'll probably be Saturday, so let's say tonight. And as many of you know, Elon and Dogecoin are uh, somewhat synonymous these days, and Elon seems to be one of the uh, champions of Dogecoin, at least the most prominent, uh, most famous champion of Dogecoin, very supportive of it. And a lot of people are speculating that he's going to have some kind of Doge reference or mention in the SNL hosting appearance or whatever he's doing. Maybe one of the skits is going to be about cryptocurrency or Doge or whatever. I don't know. I don't, I don't know if it's really going to happen. It doesn't matter if it does happen or not. There's plenty of speculation. And in case you didn't know, most markets, stocks, crypto, forex, and otherwise are heavily driven and affected by speculation. So we can expect there to be somewhat of a price increase on Doge. There's going to be a bit of a pump. A lot of people are buying into it, thinking that Elon's going to mention something, and maybe that's going to drive more sales, which is going to drive up the price even further on Dogecoin. So again, this is all complete speculation because we don't know, A, if Elon's even going to mention Doge, B, if this is really going to have that much of an influx, or they're going to be watching SNL, and just because Elon mentions it yet again, even though he's tweeted about it umpteen times over the last several months, is that one mention really going to drive that many more people into Doge that night to drive up the price even further? We don't know. That's why it's called speculation. But a lot of people are buying ahead of that, assuming that that will happen. They're hoping to beat that rush that they're anticipating from this SNL appearance of Elon. Now, I've been involved in other things like this from uh, stocks to cryptocurrency. Uh, as I've mentioned in previous videos, I've done it all. I've done Forex, stocks, cryptocurrency, options, anything that you can invest in, Earth2, anything you can invest in, I've probably dabbled with it or at least learned a little bit about it. And uh, I've seen instances, one that sticks out at the top of my head is a cryptocurrency. I don't even remember the name of it, but years ago, Floyd May Mayweather was going to have a big fight and he was a big supporter of this cryptocurrency. He was heavily invested in it. There were articles about him and his involvement with this cryptocurrency just as an investor. It's not like he's writing code or anything. And with this fight coming up, there was a bunch of hype and a lot of people thought that he was going to mention it during a post-fight interview or something like that. So I bought in pretty heavily in this cryptocurrency. It spiked before the fight and then right when the fight was starting, it tanked. Now there's a saying I want to share with you guys and I don't know how long this saying has been around, but I'm pretty sure it comes from stock traders. And the saying is, buy the rumor, sell the news. And basically what that means is by the time something comes to fruition, odds are everybody who knows about it through the rumor mill has already bought into it. The price that it's at already kind of accounts for whatever that good news or bad news is. And a lot of times when it actually comes to fruition and it becomes official, whatever that news or announcement is, the stock tanks because everybody bought in when it was a rumor because it was undervalued at that time. And as those people are buying in, the price goes up and then that announcement comes out or whatever happens, the event, whatever, whatever it is, there's a launch of a new product or there's an event or whatever. And that's when everybody else tries buying in and all the people who are already in start selling. You'll see this very often in stocks. They'll have great quarterly earnings reports. And then for some reason, right after the quarterly earnings report, the stock tanks. Well, why is that? It just had good reviews, right? It just had great quarterly earnings. Well, that's because there was a rumor mill in locker rooms and all other places on the golf course saying, hey, you should buy into stock XYZ. Uh, you know, from what we've heard, it's, it's been performing very well and these quarterly earnings are going to be phenomenal. So people are buying months in advance as they have a little bit closer to the source kind of information. And by the time the average Joe sees that report hit Yahoo News or MSNBC, they're like, oh, great, I'm going to buy into XYZ stock. And everybody else is selling out at that point because, like I said, the performance or the good news is already baked into that price. But I digress. Let's talk about how I've been making some pretty nice returns on some pretty easy little investments. And what's beautiful about this is you could actually make money or cryptocurrency, if that's what you're trading, the trading pair you're trading against, and maybe you're trading, you know, BTC versus Doge, in which case you'll be making some sats, but you can actually make money without actually 
putting a whole lot of money down or actually even buying any of these cryptocurrencies. And I'll explain exactly how. First, let me show you where I'm doing this. Now, some of you are probably familiar with this cryptocurrency exchange platform. It's one of the biggest ones on the face of the planet. If you're not familiar with it, if you're still playing around in Coinbase, that's really cute. That's basically like the kiddie pool of the crypto universe. If you're in Robinhood, you're an idiot. Get off Robinhood. It's horrible. Robinhood is the devil. Just like get out from under the rock you've been living under and you'd know why. Robinhood will freeze transactions randomly. A lot of times it's when you wanna be selling or buying. It's a horrible time to have transactions frozen. They've done this numerous amounts of time and they are very bad for the traders. Here's another saying for you. If you're not paying for the product, you are the product. And in the case of Robinhood, they offer free trading, which sounds great, right? Well, they're selling your data to hedge funds and trading houses who are then trading against you based on what they know you're doing. So Robinhood, like I said, they are the devil. You do not want to be on Robinhood. Now, I am on a couple of different cryptocurrency exchanges. Today, we are going to be talking about KuCoin. Now, KuCoin, I have just started playing with. I actually had a KuCoin account like years ago. I think like back in 2017, I set it up. I don't even know. And I think I used it to trade some really esoteric coins that I couldn't sell on other markets. I couldn't get access to on other markets. I don't even remember. It was so long ago. But I found myself in a situation where I was holding OMG. I had my OMG in Bittrex, which is where most of my coins are. And I moved my OMG to KuCoin because Bittrex was allowing me to keep it there, but they weren't allowing me to trade it. So I moved it to KuCoin. I was able to sell my OMG. And then I started playing around with KuCoin. I basically treated it like free money. Uh, KuCoin is also uh, allowing you to trade Ripple. They also have Doge. Those are both really hot right now. And a bunch of other uh, popular and some not so popular cryptocurrencies that you won't be able to find on other exchanges. So that's one reason alone to look into KuCoin. Again, get off Coinbase. Definitely get off Robinhood. Coinbase is like, my grandma's on Coinbase. Come on. Like, don't, don't stay on Coinbase. You're better than that. It's time to get in the deep end. Be a big boy or girl or whatever. Now, the reason I am so excited about KuCoin is it has so many more options as far as investments and uh, just different vehicles that you can use to make money. Among others, they have AI robots that will do your trading for you. They've got customizable bots where you can put in your parameters and have the bot trade for you. They've got staking, they've got lending, and they have margin. And they have other stuff too. They got NFTs and all sorts of other stuff. But so far, what I've been playing with, and I'll do other videos on this other stuff and probably do a video really just dedicated to KuCoin and how awesome it is, but they have bots. Um, which are super cool. I've been playing with the bots. I've been playing with the margin. I've been playing with the staking and I've been doing very well with all of them. But I'm going to talk to you today about margin. Now, very quickly, I'll tell you what margin is in case you don't know. Margin is basically you leveraging what you have in some amount that you'd be able to borrow essentially. So in this instance, you have 10X margin. So that means for every dollar or every coin you have, you're able to essentially borrow 10 times that amount. So for instance, just to really dumb it down, if I have $100 in this account, they're going to let me borrow $1,000. And you can get in a lot of trouble with margin because if the value of whatever you invest in goes too low, you're gonna be margined out where it forces you to sell. They have certain tolerances where you're, basically your debt becomes you know, too high over your holdings and you don't have enough to secure it. So just to keep you from getting into more debt than what you have, they will force you to sell. And now this is very dangerous. I actually got burned very badly in the foreign exchange market because I was playing with 400 times margin. So that means for every dollar, they were letting you play with $400, which is great when the currency goes up but it's very bad when the currency goes down. So as you can see, you can see some of the trades I've done and we'll go through some of the trading history maybe, but I don't have a whole lot of money in this account. I've kind of just been playing around with it, but the returns that I've had on that money has been phenomenal. I think I put in like altogether less than $3,000 in this account. As you can see in the uh, bottom left there, assets overview, right now my account is worth just over $5,000. Now I'm not gonna guarantee that this is gonna happen to you even if you follow what I say, but this is in the course of less than two months and this is just for me being, you know, a little pretty cautious actually. I've been making little trades here and there. I haven't really been too aggressive and I've still been able to do very well. But I think you're going to see what I'm sharing with you is going to be some some pretty amazing uh, mechanics financially if you do it the right way. And I'll show you how I've been doing it. And like I said, if it makes sense, go for it. None of this is financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor yada 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 do your own research consult a professional but this is what i'm doing and so far so good so now let's get back to margin what's beautiful about this is i'll tell you essentially what i'm doing um, i am able to have you know several hundred dollars in my margin account and 
I can then borrow several thousand dollars with that. Now, I don't go all in. Um, I'm not super aggressive with it. I don't max out what I can borrow. Again, I've been very cautious with it. So it has saved me because I was making some mistakes in the beginning. For instance, what I was initially doing, and I actually did it with this pair right here. This is Tron and Ethereum. So this is basically trading in and out of Ethereum and Tron. So what I essentially did is I saw that Tron uh, was one of the accounts that would this pair is one of the pairs that I'd be able to get 10x leverage on. So I saw that Tron, uh, according to the charts, looking at it as an analyst, I saw that Tron dropped in price. And I was thinking, wow, Tron's dropped in price. It was going sideways for a while, which means it's consolidating. Consolidation, when you see something going horizontal for a while, that means the market has basically gotten used to that price. It's tending to agree that that's about what it's worth, at least. And it's found a lot of times it's a sign that's shown uh, to find some support there. From there, you'll see some people who will jump in and start speculating that that currency can then be worth more. And that's when you'll see a spike happen. And now this happens very frequently with altcoins. So when I saw that Tron had dropped significantly and had consolidated for a while, I was thinking, okay, it's probably gonna pop up anytime soon. Let me buy in some Tron and I'll ride it up, I'll sell it. And let's just use some round numbers. Let's say I bought something at $10. And let's say I bought 10 of them at $10. So it's $100 that I'd be buying or borrowing, I should say, using that to buy. 10 coins at $10. Now, if I were to now ride that up and sell it at $15 a coin, now I've got $115 in my account and I can easily pay off that $100 loan. There is an interest fee on this, but it is small. I haven't seen the interest fee even be like a half of the coins that I borrow. And I've also been pretty good about paying it back within a few days because normally it doesn't take that long for me to make my money back. And then what's beautiful is I get to keep that profit. profit. So for, for this example, borrow $100, run it up to 15, sell it at 15, pay off the 100, and I walk away with 50. That's amazing. Now for me to borrow that $100, I would have only needed $10 in my account. So if you got $100 in your account, now we can change the math around. Now we can borrow $1,000, buy 100 coins at $10, ride those up to $15. Now I've got $1,500 and a $1,000 debt. I use that $1,500 to pay off the $1,000 debt, and I walk away with $500 profit. Now, or with the original, hundred dollars that I had in my account. Now we've moved my account from a hundred dollars to six hundred dollars with that one trade. Now this is a hypothetical, but this is essentially telling you how this works and why it's so beautiful that you're able to lend, loan, or borrow this, uh, you know, this buying power. And if it goes up, it's obviously a great thing. Now on the other hand, like I said before, if it goes down, it's a very bad thing. So I thought I was being smart by buying something that looked like it found support. It looked like it was the bottom, didn't think it was gonna go down. I only thought that it was gonna go up. It had already been much higher than what it was at, so why not buy in? Well, unfortunately, it continued to consolidate. It dropped down a little bit more, dropped down a little bit more, dropped down a little bit more, then it spiked up. With this pair, actually, with Tron, I actually ended up making three trades to buy into it, and then I have so far made two trades to then sell out of it for a profit on each one of those trades, and the one last trade, once that goes off, that will put me well into the profit, so it'll be good. But what really sucked about it is I was wrong. It dropped further, and if I had been super aggressive when I bought in, I could have been margined out, and I could have lost my original money. That, that amount of money that's just sitting in your account, that's basically collateral for the, the loan that you're getting, I could have lost that if it went down too much. Fortunately, it didn't happen and I had enough money to actually continue to borrow. So I borrowed a little bit more, borrowed a little bit more, and it's basically cost averaging. I'm bringing down the overall cost, then selling my way out as it starts going back up. And like I said, I got very, very close to closing that third one actually, and I do anticipate within the next couple of days, it's gonna pop up, it's gonna hit that third sale. I'll be out, I'll be in the green, and I'll be good to go. What I learned from that though, is not to buy something when it's at its bottom, because you don't know how solid that bottom really is and you also don't know when it's going to pop off again it could have also just consolidated for a while and while that wouldn't have been horrible i am also paying interest even though it's a small amount of interest i am paying a little bit of interest so it just keeps on consolidating consolidating and you're essentially digging the hole a little bit deeper so here's what i do now now i look for something that has popped off or it looks like it's in the process of popping off and now what i do is i borrow when it's at the top or what i think is going to be the top and i sell so I sell that coin. So in this instance, let's say Doge tomorrow. I don't think whatever level Doge pops off to, I don't think it's gonna sustain that level. It's right now trying to get above 70%, it was a, or 70 cents, it was a little above 70 cents, but it's not too strong. People are like, oh, it's gonna go to a dollar, it's going to go to $10. Right now, for Doge to go to a dollar, it would take about $27 billion of buying power to get into Doge. That's not impossible. 
but that's a lot of money getting into Doge within the next, let's say, 24 hours. And when that money gets in, there's also people have bought it at a much lower rate, and they're going to be looking at it like if you bought Doge at 10 cents and now it's creeping up on a dollar, how many of those people are going to be looking to sell? How many of the people who bought it at 50 cents are going to be looking to sell at a dollar? Boom, I just doubled my money, right? That's a great return. So that's one of the things that they're going to be fighting against is as they start buying and it starts going up, there's going to be other people who are going to be selling, which keeps the price from going up. It'll start bringing it down. So in any case, let's say we hit 10, let's say we hit a buck. We hit a buck. It's not going to stay up there. It is going to come back down. Now, that's not a guaranteed thing that's going to come back down, but common sense would tell you it's going to come back down. Not only is it rising too fast, and there's not really any coins or securities that rise that fast and then sustain at that level. A lot of time there is going to be a pullback. There's going to be what they call a correction, which is where you know you have speculation drive the price up. Then the correction is where the market actually finds what that is really worth, what most people are willing to agree that it's worth. If there's people who bought in at 50, they might feel that it's worth 70. So when it goes up to 100, they're going to be selling it, taking that profit. And when it comes back to 70, that's when they might start getting back in. Maybe 65, maybe 60. Maybe they'll try to wait and catch it at 50 again. But in any case, they don't believe it's worth a dollar. So they'll be selling and capturing that profit. So like I said, what I do now is I look for stuff that pops off. With the anticipation of Doge popping off, what my plans are, and I'll show you right here with my open orders, I plan to sell Doge at 77 cents. I've got another account in Bitrix where I'm selling some Doge that I actually own. I'm embarrassed to say that I own Doge, but you know what? I made a killing on Doge. I swore for years I would never own Doge because it's a nothing coin. It's a, it's not even a real project. There's nothing behind it. That's another reason it's going to come down. It's got nothing backing it. It's basically just people getting in. It's a pump coin. It's the biggest pump coin I've ever seen. Some would argue that Ethereum and everything other than Bitcoin are all pump coins, but Doge is definitely a nothing project. It's got nothing behind it. There's no way it's going to make money or sustain value. That may change in the future. They may change the fact that they produce more coins every year, which is basically forced inflation, which is a bad thing. They may use it with some kind of utilitarian purpose and come up with some kind of project with it, but none of that exists right now. Right now, it is a horrible investment, and there's a lot of smart money that's in it just for the ride, but I assure you that smart money is not holding long. They do not believe in this like this with the same veracity that the Bitcoin crowd does. So this coin, no matter what it goes to, it is going to come back down. Again, complete speculation, not financial advice. I might be wrong, but here's what I'm doing, assuming that as it goes up, as I said, I'm selling in another uh, account at 88 cents. In this account, I'm also going to be selling it again at 99 cents. And if it breaks a dollar, I've got alerts that are telling me each one of these thresholds it hits. If it breaks a dollar, I'm going to take out another loan where I'm basically borrowing Doge, selling it, and then waiting for the price to drop, and then I'm going to buy it back. So in this instance, at 77 cents, I have it automatically set up to borrow a thousand doge and sell it to the market. Once that's sold, I'm going to wait for it to drop. When it drops, I'm going to buy that doge back. I'm going to repay it at what, what, you know, whatever the cost is for that doge. I just have to give that thousand doge back to KuCoin and then I keep the profit. So for instance, just to use round numbers, I sell a thousand at 77 cents. It drops to 50 cents. I get to keep that 27 cent difference. See where the beauty is of this? Now, worst case scenario, it continues to go up. It goes up and hits 99 cents. I'm going to sell more Doge that I'm borrowing. I'm going to borrow it and sell it. Then when it drops, maybe it's only going to drop to 80 cents. It's going to drop lower than that. Well, let's say it only drops to 80 cents. Well, I'm negative 3 cents on the, the Doge that I borrowed at 77 and sold it, right? Because I actually now have to buy it at 80, which is 3 cents more than what I sold it for. But because I'm profiting so much on that drop from 99 cents, I will be A-OK -okay when I repay the 1,444 Doge. Plus, like I said, I have another trade in on another platform that's between that. So overall, this move on Doge, when it pops, regardless of what it pops to, as long as it hits my targets and then drops down, I'm going to be making some pretty easy money. And as I mentioned before, this is leveraged. This isn't based on me having enough money to actually buy this amount of Doge. I'm borrowing this amount of Doge based on just having a few hundred dollars in my margin account. That's all it's consuming. So if I have a few thousand dollars in my margin account, which I do, I'm able to continue to borrow as it continues to rise. And it's just like an average buy down where when something drops and you keep buying it cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, it doesn't have to rise as high for you to be profitable because your average cost on that security, that cryptocurrency, that stock, whatever it is, that average cost actually starts going down this is going to be basically the same thing, but in reverse. I'm borrowing higher and higher and higher, continuing to sell, sell, sell. So now it doesn't have to drop as low for me to still be able to buy it all back, whatever I owe, at a profit and give that to them and either hold in excess of Doge if I was believing in Doge. If you believe in Doge, then that might be the move. Instead of you buying just 1,000 Doge and repaying your loan of 1,000 Doge, you might buy you know, 1,500 Doge and keep 500 Doge and pay back 
the thousand doge or whatever the math works out to you. I, I know that's not the correct math, but you guys get the point. You could hold the doge if you want. You could hold the Bitcoin if you're trading this against Bitcoin. This one happens to be a pair of doge versus US dollar tether. So I would be holding the profit in tether after buying the thousand doge and repaying it a thousand and one doge to take care of the interest now i've done this successfully with a few coins like i said tron is the one that i haven't made a great uh, amount of profit on yet just because i've got that third sale that i'm waiting to execute before i pay off the rest of the loan so technically right now i am still in debt to it and i'm not counting any of it as profit even though those other two trade pairs were profitable but eos i did pretty well on eos uh, was one that um, i was trading eos versus bitcoin and I think I was uh, I sold EOS when it was at like 13. Let's see the order history. Um, so if you look here, yeah. So I sold. Let me get rid of the ones that aren't completed. So uh, where are we? Okay. So as you can see, the top two, if you look here, are my EOS trades. So I basically borrowed and sold. I had I owned no EOS, but I borrowed and sold EOS at uh, two, 22 EOS at. Uh, Point zero zero two uh, zero 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 two 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 Bitcoin. As you can see, the trend there, lots of twos. So twenty two EOS point zero zero two 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 Bitcoin was the price that I sold it at, and then it dropped to uh, it actually dropped to point uh, zero 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 sixteen something something something. But I didn't wait for it to drop to sixteen. I actually thought it was going to drop to sixteen, but I like to stay safe because a lot of times i've called it so close and it's missed me literally i've had trades miss me by one satoshi if you don't know what satoshi is it's a billion it's a millionth of a bitcoin so i was that close it's like a fraction of a dollar it's that close from having a trade execute because i called the top so accurately and that happens too often that now i play well within i try to play well within where i think it's going to be so i thought it was going to 16 i knew it was going to hit 18 sure enough sold it at 22 bought it at 18. so i profited basically that that four point difference on it right that's pretty good that's about uh you know 20 20 percent of what that trade was worth so a free 20 percent just about on that trade for not even having to buy it i borrowed it sold it dropped in price bought it back at a reduced price sold it back and kept the difference in bitcoin nice move right and as you can see i always buy one token more than what i borrowed just so i have enough to cover the small amount of interest so i sold borrowed and sold 22 i ended up buying 23 and if you look up uh where it says uh, my eos balance i actually have the remainder so you could see that that would have been one whole eos but it's one whole eos minus my interest rate so you could see it was like uh like 0.1211 eos so i mean it's really nothing that was what 10 cents 11 cent, uh, 12 cents it, it cost me to make that trade and borrow that so easy money free money like i said i've been experimenting with small amounts so far if you want to get ballsy with it you can do whatever you want i would be very cautious because like i said if it goes the wrong way or if it just consolidates for a while that might not be what you're planning on doing so you're definitely going to want to make sure that you hedge against things going the way you don't anticipate because none of this is guaranteed you know the best people in the world with years and years of experience are wrong every day but it looks like actually it even looks like my tron is uh, working its way back up to uh pay me off and put me in the profit that'd be cool if it happened live so yeah basically tron is at uh let's call it 42 at 48 if it jumps up to 48 i am sold out in the profit and this line up here is actually just to give you some ref reference this is 67 so it's at 42 it only has to go to 48 to put me in the profit and just uh just a week ago um just a couple weeks ago it was at 68 so that's that's well within reason that's that's nothing and uh, like i said that was a big mistake again i bought it low thinking it would pop up it hasn't popped up yet so my new kind of game is waiting for it to pop off now i'll make it even easier for you to find these what you can do is you can go up to the uh, top left here see where it says uh the trx eth you can actually look at the different coins they have they have coins that are based on nft they have coins that are based on DeFi. they have just general alts they have stuff that's traded against bitcoin so if you want to trade bitcoin pairs but what's really cool is they already have margin figured out for you so you click on margin these are all the coins that they give you margin on so now what i do i'm telling you literally what i do i go into margin i put in order of what's popped off the most right now doge is up 39 almost like 39 and or, i'm sorry 30 and a half percent yep there it goes so 30 and a half percent doge is up that's the biggest one if you've seen something that's popped off over 50 percent in 24 hours 
odds are that's not going to be sustainable. Yeah, it can continue going up. We've all probably seen hundreds and hundreds of percentages. Every once in a while, some rare alt gets pop, uh, popped uh, and pumped, I should say, but they never sustain those ridiculous levels. They always come crashing back down. Maybe not all the way back down, but like I said, if you're buying something that's already starting to pump and something like Doge that's rumored to pump some more, set that sell order a little bit higher than what it's already at. It'll hit there, borrow, sell, you wait for it to drop, then you buy back and repay. So what you would do is first you gotta have, make sure you have your money in your margin account. You're gonna go over and put in a sell price. So let's say I'll, I'll you know, do a, uh, a mock-up of Doge. So let's say we're doing Doge. Let's say we wanna sell Doge when it hits 88 cents. I click this button right here, just above the sell that says I wanna automatically borrow. Now this says it, uh, the system will borrow funds automatically for your trade at the optimal interest rate and place your order. So it's gonna find the best deal for you to place your order you put in how many you want to do. So say we're doing a thousand, and that would give me eight hundred and eighty dollars or USDT because it's tether. So it'd give me eight hundred and eighty tether. And then let's say it drops down to fifty, I'd only be paying back five hundred. So you get to keep the difference of three eighty, right? Sounds pretty crazy. Now don't go off those numbers. I don't know if it's going to drop down to fifty, but if you're so selling it high enough, you can wait it out. You might be able to wait a couple days, wait for the, the chatter to die down, wait for all the interest to die down, and it might continue to drop, 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 drop lower and lower. I think this Elon Musk thing is probably, if it is going to spike, this is the biggest reason for it to spike right now. Because like I said, Doge isn't coming out with any announcement about a new product or service or anything like that. The guy who founded it, the team that created Doge, they're not working on it anymore from what I understand. So this is completely driven by speculation at this point and this seems to be the best time for me to make some quick money on doge that's why i want to hurry up and get this video out to you guys if you guys found this stuff useful i've got my referral code to kucoin uh, another cool thing about kucoin is they do like even just for checking in on the app daily which costs you no money there's a great app and if you want to do the uh, bot trading where they use you like i said you could set the parameters for your bot yourself you can use the ai bot i've got six ai bots running right now i've already got two that have completed or basically the amount of the, uh, the the value of the coin that I was trading exceeded the parameters that I had it at. So it stopped trading, basically locked me in at profit. I closed those and started some other ones. So right now I've got six active bots. The bots are done through the app on the phone, but then also, like I said, you can just check in every day and they give you uh, what they call KuCoin candy. You could trade that candy in for things like, uh, you know, interest-free margin loans or a bunch of stuff, free percentage, like free percentages off of stuff, um, free trading, no trading fees, all sorts of stuff. But it's basically another way to make get free stuff. They also do airdrops, all sorts of stuff. And I'll do more video on it because like I said, KuCoin itself, there's so much that it's doing, it is overwhelming. But to find this, this is right in the spot trading or you can go into the margin trading. Again, my referral code is in the show notes below. You'll be able to figure out probably um, how to navigate yourself at least to the spot trading. It, look for spot trading, margin trading, exchange and you'll find your find your way here and again there it is a little confusing because you might have a couple of different accounts uh, as you can see it's got main account trading account margin account contract account the contract account is for staking the margin account is for doing what i was just telling you guys how to do the margin trading account is just for normal trading and then you have your main account now what's cool is you can move your cryptocurrency your holdings in and out of these accounts like within seconds and it doesn't cost you anything so you're just it basically they have these different accounts so you don't accidentally trade something that you didn't mean to you can take stuff that you don't want to trade you want to hold long you can go put that in a contract and stake it and make a pretty high interest rate on it or you can just put it in your main account um, or you can make sure that you're not putting it in your margin account and then extending your margin beyond what you wanted to do and you end up being in more debt than you mean to be um, but in any case I will have more videos about it but if you want to try to try this move on doge i do think that this is probably going to be the best opportunity to uh, give it a try again never invest more than you can afford to lose none of this is a sure thing this is all a gamble in the dark nobody knows what they're doing especially when you're dealing with doge it's a complete roll of the die but if you've got some extra money, you want to try to have some fun with it, this is a lot more fun than uh, going out, spending it on a bar tab, and getting a hangover. I assure you that uh, you know, you're going to feel a lot better uh, you know, losing a little bit of money, learning something, than losing guaranteed money and waking up with a hangover. But that's all I got for you today. Again, referral code in the show notes below. Subscribe, alerts. I look forward to bringing you guys more content on this. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below. What coins are you trading? What coins are you holding long? Are you one of those people who is just adamant about Bitcoin? I am growing to be more and more of a fan of Bitcoin. I'm actually using altcoins to basically buy more Satoshi, but this is a great way for me to play around in the alts. Again, leverage and buy, you know, get a little bit more buying power. And uh, if this is something that you guys find useful, great, use it. If it's, uh, you know, if you're at all weary of it, don't touch it. 
Again, only play with money that you can afford to lose. That won't ruin your week. But other than that, safe trading, good luck, and uh, yeah, see you next time.